Reason number one, because we can. In 1930, John Maynard Keynes published the essay Economic Possibilities for Our Grandchildren, where he predicted that in 100 years, people would be working 15 hours per week. His logic was that technology and productivity would keep improving at a similar pace as in the past, and that people would want to share the gains of productivity, both to consume more and to work less. The first part of his argument was right. We had huge increases in productivity and technological innovations beyond imaginable in 1930. But the second part of his argument was wrong. Since 1940s, the weekly working hours have hardly fallen. Throughout this time, we keep being promised that we can't afford to reduce the working week right now, but we will do so in the future. In 1956, US Vice President Richard Nixon promised that the four-day working week would come soon, just as former chief economist from the Bank of England, Andy Aldane, recently predicted a four-day working week in 2050. We shouldn't procrastinate any longer. We can do it now. And we don't have to sacrifice anything. As Keynes taught us, economies are not static. They are dynamic. They naturally grow. We can take advantage of these natural gains in productivity of growing economies to shift to a four-day working week without reducing standards. Four to six years is all we need. But it can't be through an empty promise. It has to be credible. And hence, it must come through legislation. The choice that we make as a society of how much we want to work and how much we want to enjoy leisure, it's exactly that. It's a choice, not a law of economics. Societies have chosen to keep working, but we are always on time to change our mind. My book, Friday's the New Saturday, is my attempt to change yours. <laughs>